Sometime in April of last year, I got an unexpected flood of traffic to my website. There were almost 50,000 visits from all over the world in a single day. Checking the list of referrals on Google Analytics, I discovered my website was on Reddit. The link went to a page that's a mix of images and presenter's notes that I published shortly after I gave a talk at a conference on art and activism. If this page were a story I wrote for a web-based news site, the editor might have told me I did a great job, but I didn't do a great job. The traffic has nothing to do with the quality of the work. The subreddit TIL, Today I Learned, picked up a line in the page that says CIA secretly pumped funds into abstract expressionists. I mentioned this in my talk. It isn't even a particularly rare bit of trivia. It comes from a book by Francis Stoner Saunders called Cultural Cold War. Plenty of blogs have picked up this story over the years, and many of them linking to a 1995 article in The Independent that Saunders wrote before the book. It isn't even the first time this story has appeared on Reddit's TIL. Here is another book on the Cold War, Cold War Civil Rights. It talks about how the Soviets looked at racial injustice as American hypocrisy, undermining U.S. rhetoric, promoting itself as a free society. As thousands took to the streets... We see a similar dynamic today in the way that RT closely follows stories about activism, police brutality, and racism in America. RT appropriates activism and dissent for its own purposes. Unlike homegrown mainstream media, it has no incentive to confirm to the agenda of U.S. law enforcement. On the web, RT is just part of the soup that's Google News. You have to apply to be part of Google News. A few years ago, I went through the application process for the website I was editing, but my request was denied. I never figured out if it had something to do with the sitemap or if Google News was simply overwhelmed with requests at the time. It appears that Google News privileges the design of the site, the sitemap, over whether the news is biased or not. I wondered if Got News was on Google News. Got News came to my attention last autumn when a rumor floated around on Twitter that ABC News paid Darren Wilson six figures for an interview. The rumor linked to Got News. It sounded credible. TV news has paid its controversial guests in the past, like Casey Anthony. And anyway, he might have received something in kind, a nice hotel, a flight. The report was swiftly discredited. And the founder of the website, Chuck Johnson, went on to drum up traffic in increasingly objectionable ways. He docks Jackie of the UVA Rolling Stone screw up. But then he got the wrong woman. It's all for clicks. It's all for purposeless Reddit traffic. That means nothing, but can shore up click rate ad money. Conservatives often complain that Google News refuses to list their websites. Got News isn't on Google News, but the Blaze is in there. The Blaze is Glenn Beck's outlet. Okay, so tell me, take me through the chalkboard, show me what you found. Okay, let's walk through it. You, so, you started with the two, yeah. two, two main guys. You started with two main guys. So the two main guys we started with was a guy named D. Ray McKesson. And a guy named Sean King. Can, can I'll even can I can, can I start here? Please. 
Hashtag Black Lives Matter and hashtag Hands Up Don't Shoot. Once a guest on his show created a money map that connects prominent activists in the Black Lives Matter movement, like DeRay McKesson, to, well, eventually ISIS. Chuck Johnson was finally kicked off Twitter when he tried to crowdfund to take out, in his words, DeRay McKesson. York University, and I'd like to start with you, uh, Dr. Garza, if I, may, uh, if I may, because that that is a bit of a chilling analogy that it's the ISIS of infection. In an essay on the tech buzzword disruption, Jill Lepore wrote in the New Yorker, "The Times is a nation state. Buzzfeed is stateless. Disruptive innovation is competitive strategy for an age seized by terror." So does that mean New York Times rather than BuzzFeed is more like ISIS? BuzzFeed could still be the Ebola of news and another metaphor somewhere. Even Google image search can privilege bias news. Images appear higher on a page depending on traffic and whatever Google determines as relevancy. Searching for a picture of Freddie Gray, I found this from the content farm heavy.com. I looked up the author of the piece. Some of his other stories were sympathetic to the protesters. He has no point of view that I can discern. His point of view is whatever will bring in traffic. He must be paid for traffic, probably not much, but possibly more than a community paper stringer ever made. I really appreciate how this website, Media Mass, is so transparent about its manipulation of information. It exists for traffic alone. Every story is pre-written. Every story swaps out the age and profession of each celebrity to generate a new story. Just about anyone you can think of will show up there. However slim the odds, there are odds that one of these stories will be correct someday, and then Media Mass can claim it broke the story. Maybe all of this is happening on a parallel universe somewhere. Either way, it can sell ads against these fantasies. So BuzzFeed is not the ISIS of news. It often publishes strong investigative pieces, but it is news designed for traffic. It A-B tests its headlines. It uses deeply detailed analytics determining things like how far you scroll down a page. Even traffic can be faked. This is from Trustwave. Recent research, there is malware generating fake traffic to pro-Russia video clips. They said it's, to quote, the first time we've observed the tactic used to promote video clips with a seemingly political agenda. Oh. 
don't want to miss that. What do you make of this information, Sonny? Every I wouldn't trust RT you know, for I, news I on MH17, but I'm not gonna follow going to follow CNN for news on the murder of Freddie Gray either. Are going to give a Cops to tortured and killed him. Deliberating and, over and the time of death and methods of attack is running out the clock. CNN invited talking heads to analyze neck injuries because it cannot challenge power or address structures of inequality. So what media can we trust? Trusted media is Kevin Moore, who filmed the torture of Freddie Gray before his killing. He's been harassed, intimidated by cops ever since, arrested shortly after at gunpoint. Trusted media is Chelsea Manning, Edward Snowden, risk, transparency, authenticity. It's information that never should have been secret. Trusted media is Faden Santana, who films the killing of Walter Scott. It's Ramsey Orta, who filmed the killing of Eric Gardner. The cops looked for anything to pin on him and then sent him to Rikers. He couldn't eat for fear of rat poison that can sometimes be found in inmates' food. Orta and Santana are both 23 years old. It's just instinctive to document, to create evidence. This is footage of injustice, that which never should have happened, but is documented for accountability. It's the absence of agendas. It's not about traffic. Trusted media is raw material for us to interpret for ourselves. 